Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I hope you are enjoying Spark questions and ML series and other questions on my channel. So if you have any doubts, please put it in our comment section. If you have, if you want us to cover some new topics or if you have any questions that you have faced during interviews, please post it in our comment section. We'll be very happy to make the video on that topic. Cool. Uh, so in continuation with our uh, you know, uh, 10 ways to improve Spark performance. I have made this video for today. Uh, so we have already covered five five ways uh, to uh, improve Spark performance. If, if you are not aware of those, then if you have not seen that, uh, that video, then please uh, watch it and uh, then you can continue with this uh, video. Uh, you can see the link to those uh, those videos on the top right corner of this video uh, as a card uh, okay let's move on to the today's video okay one very important aspect of spark performance is choosing the right number of executors and executor codes it can happen that if you choose uh, you know very small executors then you know your executors may not have uh, good enough resources to uh, handle the memory requirements of the task and uh, you know uh, the speed a uh, speed boost up it, it may not give and if you end up creating so many executors on a single machine uh, you know they may be contending with each other for uh, io resources and uh, your job will be very slow so it becomes very important that you choose right number of executor and executor cores otherwise you will fail a hit in your uh, spark performance a, a job uh, you know you will see the performance of your job is very bad so to uh, i have made a specific video on this topic uh, in which i feel will be very useful for you if you are selecting uh, the number of executor and executor cores uh, for your cluster this is a cluster specific configuration so if you have a cluster with 40 nodes then the uh, requirements will be different if you have a cluster with 80 nodes then the requirements will be different but the methodology to calculate the execute number of executors and executor cores and respective memory is same so i will urge you to go through that video uh, you know you can get the link on the top right corner of uh, this video at this moment uh, yeah uh, if you are using a shared cluster, then it can happen that uh, your uh, uh, application, different Spark applications are waiting for resources uh, uh, because one other Spark application is already taking up the resources. So in those situations, it is better to define uh, different priorities or different priority queues in your cluster for your jobs. Suppose there is one user all his jobs are very high priority jobs so or uh, you know one user knows that his job is not of high priority job then you can create different queues in your uh, uh, cluster like suppose you're using yarn in yarn you can create different queues and to each queue you can assign priority and uh, you can define upper limit and lower limit of resources on that queue so uh, jobs which will be going to the higher priority queue will get more resources job going to the medium priority queue will get lesser number of resources and job going to the least priority queue will get least number of resources so you can do all those kind of uh, configurations in your cluster and you should also uh, enable uh, dynamic resource allocation in your cluster so that you know as you get new jobs in your cluster the memory can be adjusted accordingly and you should also enable spark shuffle service so that uh, your executors are not waiting for other executors to read the data from it so i have explained this particular concept in spark shuffle service and uh, dynamic resource allocation in detail so uh, you can again look if you want the details of it you can again look into the right side of the uh, uh, right top corner of this video and uh, you will find a link cool so you should all also avoid unnecessary calculation in your code suppose you are uh, making a database connection and uh, doing a lookup for specific information in your database so then you should try that you make that database connection only once for a whole rdd or 
for a whole partition. You should not make that database connection for every row and close it. If you are going to make a database connection for every row and then close the database connection, then it's going to be very, very slow because you are dealing here with big data. So number of rows are definitely going to be very, very huge. So uh, you should avoid those kind of situations. Uh, you know, uh, if a operation can be done at partition level or at whole RDD level, try to do it at that level. Don't do it within dot map function or uh, you know uh, or, or dot for each operation. So if you are using dot map operation, try to use dot map partition. It will give you a better performance in the, this kind of scenario. Okay, the third one is that avoid data shuffle. So you will see a lot of operations uh, which uh, which cause uh, which are not using uh, uh, combiner. So amount of data that will be traveling over network will be huge. So you should avoid using operations which are you know uh, which cause high shuffle uh, of the data. So, uh, for example, you should use the reduce by key operation rather than group by key operation. So, group by doesn't use combiner and reduce by key uses combiner. So, amount of data traveling over network from one executor to other executor will be very low in case of reduce by key. So, these are three uh, ways um, uh, with which you, you can increase your Spark performance. So, I'll be back with two more ways uh, to increase spark performance i hope you liked our third uh, you know video in the series uh, i am going to share some more videos which you may like uh, on you can see the cards on uh, on the screen please subscribe to our channel and thank you for watching this video